Veli here from Greenwood Solutions. Yeah, I'm wearing my glasses today because I'm in front of the computer and I can't see too well. Because today, we're gonna to be talking about DC cable scheduling for a commercial solar system using, ta-da, spreadsheets again. Yeah, I know. I'll try to make it a bit more interesting than normal, okay? Because spreadsheets are a little bit boring. Personally, I love them, but most people think they're, they're horrible things. But what it comes down to is recording the information and documenting it and having it in a usable format. So hit that subscribe button and let's get stuck into it. So today we're talking about a DC cable schedule. Well, what the heck's that? Well, effectively at the end of the day, if you're designing a commercial solar system, you're gonna be using DC cable. You're gonna be using different size cables for your DC you're gonna be connecting them to DC isolators. And this spreadsheet here is an attempt to put into a palatable format um, what you need to do. I'll try to make it entertaining as much as I can, but <laughs> it's hard, it's a spreadsheet, but hey, let's go. Let's slowly go through this. Now, over here we have a drop-down list which means I can effectively select a range of DC cabling all the way up to 185 mil. <laughs> Never gonna use 185 mil cable, but it's there. Okay, so in this case, I've picked four mil. The cable brand is Acme, and um, just like the Roadrunner and the Wiley Coyote, Acme is the way to go. So, because I, I want to be uh, brand agnostic here. Now, in this particular cell here, this is something a lot of installers don't do, and that is the signage for their isolator. Each isolator really should be signed ideally with what inverter, what maximum PowerPoint tracker, and what string. And in this case here, we have one, two, three, four, five strings going to a single tracker inverter. Obviously with the voltages and the currents of the panel in question you're getting that from your data sheet. The number of panels in a string, 19. The panel voltage VAC max. Now obviously this is the voltage at open circuit of your panel. It's really important that you get this information. Now by having the person signing off on the connection, John Smith, this gives you a little bit of an audit trail that in six months time, if there's an issue with a DC isolator, you can go, well, hey, it was John Smith who, who, who signed off on that. He did the final connection. And then if there's a recall, and I'm old enough to have seen a few recalls with these DC isolators, you've got that serial number. Now, let's go to the volt drop. The voltage drop is a recommendation. It's a should not a shall. And they recommend that a volt drop on the DC side should not exceed 3%. Uh, personally, I think it shouldn't exceed 1%, especially when you're talking about a commercial system where the, um, it's a financial situation. You wanna maximize what comes out of the panel that, and goes to the inverter. Let's play around, for instance, with the cable size here. So with using four mil with a 30 meter run, you've got a 0.42% volt drop. Now if I change that to 130 meters, you can see the volt drop's gone up to 1.82%. Now if I change that cable to six mil, you can see that the volt drop has reduced. Now if I change that back to 30, the volt drop percentage will reduce again. Now, if I scroll down here, what I've done here is I've summed or averaged all the volt drops across the whole array and I've ended up with 0.78%. Well, let's go to the um, volt drop calculation. So the V lookup looks at what's in B4, which is here, right? And then to find out the information required, it goes across to over here. See how it says W 
three. It goes to here and looks at all this information here. And to get, to get the correct cable resistance, you have to say, look in the second column, which is the two. That's why I put a two. So I, it's looking at what you put in here, over here, and then the VLOOKUP accesses that information and pulls these figures out. If I went six mil, it'd be 3.75 resistance. If I did 10 mil, it'd be 2.23. So once it references that, then it multiplies that by the string current. Then it multiplies that by the distance that you put in one way to the inverter. It multiplies that by two, because you have to include the return path. And then divides that by a thousand because of the resistance side of things, because it's resistance per kilometer as we can see over here. And then divides that by J14 to get the percentage. Because with this calculation, you end up getting a volt drop of a figure of, in, in the first case of 3.73 volt. And to get a percentage, you have to divide that by the string voltage and multiply by 100. Hence, you get that percentage. With the spreadsheet, we've got cable size for all the strings. I've basically done different colors to determine inverter one, inverter two, inverter three. So there's one inverter, two inverter, three inverter, four inverter. Now, an interesting thing also I've done here is put in the calculation that if you've done, if you made a mistake with your number of panels in your string, let's say I put in 21, it'll automatically signal that the 1000 volt limit has been exceeded. Now that means it's looking at H4, which multiplies I4, which is a panel voltage VOC max. In other words, the open circuit voltage of the panel with a temperature multiplier. The colder the temperature, the bigger the open, open circuit voltage on a panel, and this it, it can occur early in the morning. This spreadsheet will allow you to simply determine the, the max VOC of your string if it goes over the 1000 volt, which is the limit on most um, commercial inverters, apart from the inverters they use on solar farms. They have a higher voltage, up to 1500 volts. And it also uh, calculates the volt drop so you can play around with distances. Well, the reality is you can't really play around with the distances. Um, if the, distance, the distances are the distances, but what you can uh, play around with is the different cables. There's uh, a lot of issues on site with um, four and six meter cable being um, misidentified. Um, so it's really important that you know what cable goes where and you've got a record that shows what cable goes where. Now, with the system size in, in kilowatts, I've effectively just summed up all the panel wattages. And you can see the calculation here. I've summed E4 to E23 and I've multiplied that by H4 to H23. The total cable length I've summed L4 all the way down to L23 and multiply that by two. So just some simple cal calculations. The VLOOKUP is an interesting one. There's a lot of confusion with VLOOKUP, but we'll go over that one again. So with the um, volt drop percentage, we're looking at VLOOKUP, so it references what's in here and it looks at it looks at what's in over here, from here to here, and then says, I specifically want to drag back a value from the second column, being two, because there's only two columns. It multiplies it by what's in F4, which is the string current. 
multiplies that by what's in L4, which is the distance, multiplies that by two because it's return, divides by 1,000 because we are talking about um, resistance per kilometre, and then divides again by what's in J4, which is the string voltage at maximum power point to get a percentage, which in this case is 0.42. So I've used data validation a few times here just to do some error warnings. So for instance, um, if I click on this, it'll show the same thing for each one. So that's effectively it. Thanks for watching our presentation on DC cable schedules using a spreadsheet. And I know you love spreadsheets now. I can see it. I can see it in your eyes. You love them. So hit that subscribe button and look forward to more spreadsheet fun. Woohoo! Thanks very much. Bye.